It's January 25th, and it's uh, 702. We've got a quorum here, so we'll go ahead and kick off the uh, Zoning Board of Adjustment meeting for tonight. Uh, notice is hereby given of the Friendswood Zoning Board of Adjustment regular meeting to be held at 910 South Friendswood Drive, Friendswood, Texas, Friendswood City Hall, Council Chambers, regarding the items of business according to the agenda listed below. Call to order. We've got a quorum, so we'll call everyone to order here. Uh, and we've had to, uh, we brought Lynn up here as uh, an alternate up here. And so we'll, uh, before we get started, I wanted to uh, make, make a public statement in, uh, in the, the realm of transparency. My wife and I both served on the uh, citizen advisory team for the bonds that uh, are paying for this project. I personally was one of the ones that went and inspected the, uh, the, the city facilities, uh, but I think I can be open and honest and fair with this, and I don't believe it will have any bearing on, on this matter, but I wanted to be open and honest and upfront. All right, uh, communications from the public. To comply with the provisions of the Open Meetings Act, the board may not deliberate on subjects discussed under the agenda, this agenda item. However, the board may direct such items be placed on a regular agenda for discussion and or possible action. Would anyone like to address the board? Seeing no one to address the board, uh, this process is uh, how we, uh, the, the person, the customer, the citizen comes before us. We take the facts from both sides. We make a adjustment or judgment as does it fit the rules and fit the, the uh, ordinance that sits out, points out here, and then we, uh, we vote on it. We ask questions. The, uh, the parties can, uh, both parties, uh, the city and the customer, can uh, speak in, in this, and then we, uh, we vote. And if it's not in your favor, your alternative is to take it to court in Galveston, because we're in Galveston County. Uh, OK. First, we will conduct a public hearing. After the city and petitioner present their cases, we will receive comments from the public. Anyone from the public may be recognized to give a statement either for or against the request. A city representative will offer a history of the original request and why it was denied. Then the petitioner or the petitioner's representatives will take the podium and tell us why they think we should approve their request. The public will be asked if they would like to give a statement for or against the request. At this point, the public input will be closed after they've finished. At this point, the public input will be closed and only the board members will have the opportunity to ask questions, gather information, and to deliberate and vote on the application. By law, a supermajority is required to approve the application. That means you will need at least four of the five votes to approve this application. The only way to appeal the board's decision is to file a lawsuit in a district court, county court, or county court of law where the property is located. There is a short time deadline for this appeal. Optional, you may wish to consult a lawyer if you want to consider appealing our decision. Okay, at this time, uh, we'll do the uh, witness and and taking the oath. This is a quasi-judicial quasi proceeding. The city keeps records, including audio and video records of testimony given. All persons who will be speaking before the board must be sworn in, and we will ask you to speak from the podium so that we can hear you clearly and so that your testimony can be recorded. We ask your questions, we ask you questions during our deliberation. We ask that you return to the podium for your answers for the same reason. If you intend to speak on the board tonight, please stand, raise your right hand, and for your oath, 
do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth and the whole truth in your testimony before the board this evening? I do. All right, thank you. Okay, the public hearing uh, is now open. Uh, see comments from uh, both oral and written regarding a request of, for a variance request to allow three apparatus bay doors to front a major thoroughfare, FM 528 or West Parkwood Avenue in the Community Overlay District on the property located at 2601 West Parkwood Avenue, one point acre land being a part of abstract 184, page two of the Mary Sloan survey, track 18, Galveston County, Friendswood, Texas. The hearing will include staff presentation. Uh, Aubrey will make that presentation. Yes, sir. Uh, so this is a city owned property that faces FM 528. Um, the property is approximately 120 feet wide and um, our community overlay district is um, an a, we have our base zoning, um, which includes like community shopping center, neighborhood commercial, um, and our commercial zoning districts. But we have an overlay called the community overlay district that applies to our major thoroughfares, which include FM 2351, uh, FM 518, FM 528 from city limit to city limit, as well as Friendswood Parkway um, from city limit to city limit. So though the community overlay district typically has additional landscaping and screening requirements, um, we you know just encourage, it's for aesthetic reasons mainly, um, we just wanna keep our thoroughfares looking nice. So um, one of the requirements is that, or restrictions, is that garage bay doors cannot face the right of ways um, on those major thoroughfares. So I think the intent was for gas stations and auto repair places, um, and things like that. Um, we do have some new ones that have gone in that they don't face the thoroughfare. We make them, or ask them to, um, require them to position the buildings so that the bay doors are um, on the side of the building or such as that. Um, unfortunately with these, um, the use of this building, the in and out of the fire trucks, there is a need for the bay doors to face the right of way. Um, and so that is the purpose of the request for tonight. Okay, uh, next. Good evening, I'm Bria Whitmire, Projects Coordinator with the Engineering Department. And uh, we, as we started to look at this project, uh, we understand there's a fire station there now. We know we had a clean state, taking that down, the existing conditions are, are not being debated with the new design, if we had, we still have a very limited frontage. We still have less than 120 feet in the front, including the culverts that have to be up front and the sloping, we're talking about 67 feet of driveway space. So in order to try to turn the building there, we would definitely have to acquire more property, which the bond funds did not account for. Um, there was also the idea of if we relocated the fire station to where we could meet this ordinance, but then we're talking about the response time and that'll affect our ISO rating to which point with our current existing conditions, if we were to move that and it affect that, that goes back to resident community insurance rates. So past that, the last part where I understand the intention of this ordinance of like Aubrey was saying, you don't want to see a lot of sweaty mechanics working on a, on a vehicle. These bay doors are going to be closed until the bell rings. And then that response time is when every second counts. And so with that reason, uh, going through all the design considerations and looking at it as a whole, that's why the engineering department is, is asking for this variance. All right. Uh, anyone else want to say anything? Stan, you good? Okay, uh, public comments for this. Anyone here to speak for it? Anyone here to speak against it? Okay, once all presentations and comments are complete, 
uh, state the public hearing is now closed. Discussion and possible actions considering approving the variance request to allow three apparatus bay doors to front a major thoroughfare, FM 528 West Parkwood Avenue in the community overlay district on the property located at 2601 West Parkwood Avenue, one acre of land being a part of abstract 184, page two of the Mary Sloan survey, track 18, Galveston mm -hmm. County, Friendswood, Texas. Okay, are there any comments or questions from the board? Gentlemen? Well, I, I would like to say having been a, an industrial firefighter and knowing the size of these apparatuses, it's going, it would be very hard for these apparatuses to come in on the side because the automobile parking is there too and for them to maneuver and back into their uh, bays. Uh, knowing that, uh, question I have for the young lady, are these bays drive-through bays or are they just back in? Two of them are, are back in, and one of them is designed to where we can clear. Uh, there's some additional parking in the back, but if those cars move, it's a pull through. And so that was at least the option is there if needed for training events and whatnot. Okay. I know it is a congested area. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Anyone else have anything to say? Ask what? Question? Okay. Uh, now we have to we have to go through the sheet and find the legal. Do we fit the everything before we can have a motion to hear? So we're gonna we'll go through this step by step. The variance request is to allow three apparatus bay doors to front a major thoroughfare, FM 528 Parkwood Avenue, in the con community overlay district being a variance from Appendix C, Zoning Ordinance Section 7.5.6, Architectural Elements. Upon giving notice and conducting a public hearing on this variance request in accordance with Section 11A.2 of the Zoning Ordinance, the Board of Adjustments adopts these specific findings as follows. The grant of the variance will not be contrary to the public interest. Y'all agree? What do y'all say on that discussion? I, I, I agree. I don't yeah, think that we would agree. be anything. There are special conditions peculiar to the property involved. And I think we both spoke to that. I know it's a narrow property and it goes way back. Uh, anybody have any <coughs> objection to that? No objection. The literal, literal enforcement of the ordinance will result in unnecessary hardship to the property owner different from his neighbors or other similar properties. Now, I've got to ask, does this actually apply because we, there are no other fire stations out there? Right, we'll need to make an affirmative finding on all those things in order to okay. move forward. So the literal enforcement of the ordinance will result in unnecessary hardship for the property owner different from his neighbors and other properties. Moving the, the big apparatuses, the fire trucks, around to back in and go around the cars, I think that is a hardship. The last thing we want is for one of them to hit the building, and that's the last thing they want too. So I would say yes. Any of Anyone else? No objection. No objection, I agree. Okay. Hardships. The financial cost of compliance is greater than 50% of the appraised value of the structure as, so, as shown on the most recent certified appraisal roll. Uh, do we even but have do a we structure that's on this recent certified appraisal roll? The structure do that we have. That's, I don't believe we do. That's an older structure there. Oh. Did uh, we? Did we address those with the, with the number three, though, already? I, th I think we did. I think we did. I think that's uh, And I, I will ask Karen. Okay. If, if you don't think there's a hardship on the... Okay. 
So you don't have to go all through all the detailed hardships. Okay, we don't so have to. Yeah, so you can just get back down to okay. the last two. All right. The grant of the variance is consistent with the spirit of the ordinance. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, the city considers the structure to the structure to be a non-conforming structure. Got it. I'm up one line. <laughs> the grant of the variance will ensure that substantial justice will be done. Agreed. Now I agree with that wholeheartedly. At this point, <coughs> I'll ask for a, a resolution. Would anybody like to propose a resolution? I make a motion that we vote to approve the variance as, as requested. Okay. I second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Everybody for it, raise your hand. Okay. Seeing as all are against, or all are for, no abstains or no against, we uh, have granted the variance. No conditions, and it's done. This one was pretty easy. <laughs> okay, so let's get this one here. Uh, so we had a motion to hear final that all necessary legal prerequisites have been met, and the application for variance at 2601 West Parkwood Avenue should be approved. We have no conditions, no amendments, and we have a second. Okay. Important. If you make the motion to include the legal prerequisites as above, you do not have the vote to vote separately on each precondition, such as whether the variance or exception is in conformity with the spirit of the law Just and other legal chairman. requirements. You can just go on to the approval of the minutes since y'all okay. already voted and that item's done. Okay, that item's done, so we'll move on. Yes. Uh, minutes for the regular meeting held Tuesday, December 21st, 2021. Are there any corrections to the minutes of the December 21st meeting? If there are no corrections, is there a motion for approval? A motion to approve the minutes from December 21st? Do I hear a second? Second. second. Okay, all those mm -hmm. in favor? Approving the amendments. All right. Please say aye. And aye. declare the motion approved. Uh, staff, council, or liaison reports. Anyone got anything to say? All right. I believe we are done. Stan, uh, I know y'all have worked with them on this. Uh, is it going to be real nice for y'all? Chairman, <laughs> we don't need to have conversations okay. Okay. right now. All right. Okay. Yeah. I, think I forgot to adjourn. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Okay. All in favor? Say aye. Aye. Okay. We are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>